just two things. If we, if we look inside of Google and says it doesn't look like it's working, we haven't looked everywhere. We have to look everywhere. And we also have to talk to our client about that. We have to say, are these people emailing you? Like what kind of conversations are they having inside of the back end of their Shopify that we don't know about? Hey, John. Yep. I, I have a question for you. So for one of the issues we've always been facing is that we're in this really competitive jewelry market where pro their products are like $500 to $1,000. But then if it's jewelry, gold jewelry, you know, there's products that are like $50, $100. And I find that we're not able to really differentiate it and we're falling into that same category as them. And we don't have that same budget to compete against them in the standard shopping campaign. So how do you think we should um, work on that? Would you say they have low AOV products? Well, our products are like $500 minimum, uh, whereas everyone else competing in that same realm, they when we when our products show up they're like fifty dollars to a hundred dollars sometimes depending on who our competitor is that shows up yeah i would definitely be focusing on higher aov products um so i'm not saying you know dump in the patek for 170 but if i was to look at a um a price that's over you know three thousand dollars as an example or just say like two nine 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 and there's 748 products that have a price over 3000 and we're getting no clicks on any of these my question there would be should we should we test this because Sorry, the 500 this what this campaign the only reason why you're not seeing anything over 2000 is because oops, this oops. is under 500 dollar i made a whoopsie campaign. daisy Sorry. i'm going to do it this way so we got here we got 250, 177, 129. Let's flip it. 2175 on pendant. So my question would be is, do we want to do the 200 plus 500 plus 300 plus 200 plus this? Or is there a way for us to test, you know, more than maybe 500 and clicks on the higher price products? Put more Aspen to a higher AOV. When you're getting it up to the five, seven, and ten K, you're in the um, you're in the Cartier. You're obviously in in Rolex. You're in a more luxurious buyer. Oh, there's Cartier right there. There you go. Um, you're in the more well known. Like people aren't looking at can I get Cartier for two hundred fifty or four hundred bucks. They're looking for Cartier. Um. Obviously, same thing with Rolex. Performance Max, in my opinion, in Rolex is not going to work. Um, Performance Max, in my opinion, for this campaign really doesn't work. We've seen that with pendants. You push pendants, they get pendant sales. And that's the only thing that's selling is because the only thing that we're spending money on. So I think that in this area here, I'd try to move into more of a potentially even brand name spend. What are we spending on Rolex standard shopping? $200 a day. What are we spending on Cartier per, in standard shopping? $200 a day. I think we need to diversify a larger AOV. Um, and that's something that we actually saw with where year over year, it's getting better um, from a, uh, uh, not from an order. Our orders stay the same, but we're 55% up because we started to push higher AOV products. Now, this one was being pushed more socially, which is fine. But that's the thing too, is that could we make the same amount of sales, but increase the ad spend by going into, and, and what's funny is this whole thing actually moved because of this. Um, this is the item that's selling is a four thousand dollar throne. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it it works. Like I I would say Cartier would probably sell better than a four thousand dollar hammock throne. Um, but you know, this is just crazy. Uh, anywho, that would be my my question is, could we start to break out of the onesie twosie two fifty five hundred and push into higher higher AOV products? Yeah, sure, we can do that. And I think we tried standard shopping Rolex campaign last year. Yeah, when was that? Was in sorry, my bad. We tested that in 2022 in May. Yeah, so that was in 2022. The struggle is that you know we don't really get enough volume of sales for even like weeks, and sometimes months goes by. 
So then we have to make a decision. Like we have a limited budget here, so where we can allocate that budget? Is it this one here? Yes. July twenty twenty three. This one was shown July twenty twenty three. Is that what you're thinking? Right. I think we were also running one in May. Yeah. But yeah, that's the one. Sorry. Yeah, I don't know if you know this was enough, and I don't know if that was even a good enough uh, CPC. I'm curious as to see. Uh, Yeah, Rolex, Rolex watch, Cartier. That uh, definitely shouldn't have been the third one here. Uh, this one's good. Rolex, yeah. No, no, no. No. Yeah, I don't know if, if this would be enough to really sell that much watch if this was enough of an investment. Um, right. I and think that, yeah, good. Currently, we are running a search campaign for Rolex, and it's getting really good, relevant search terms. But yeah, we haven't seen any Rolex sales coming in. Can we just sell Rolex here this week. Yeah, this this must be a recent one. I checked it on Friday. There was no sale. Yep, it was on Saturday. Got it. Ah, Facebook paid, but that's the first visit, so who knows? Yeah. High risk of fraud, Luis Terry. Also, yeah. also, that one says fraud, so this likely is not going to go through as an order. Yeah, that's but another it's thing. Paid. Sorry, well, it's paid. I, status is paid. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was gonna yeah. say. Usually, what that means is just that the email isn't like found with their background check or with 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 uh, Shopify's checks. But that would be the thing is I would, I would, you know, shopping usually does better than search just because you can show a price of a proc that is what, I mean, if someone's looking for a Rolex watch um, and Rolexes are actually in high demand right now because they are like six months out for the Submariners. Um, so you have like, it's hot Swiss watch, Omni, you know, authentic watches. Like there's, there's a big, there's a big demand for for Rolex right now, <clears throat> their uh, date just they just. I mean, they're priced fairly competitively, depending upon which one they sold. Oh yeah, that's a. That's a rose gold diamond. Yeah, that's nice. That's something close to this one. So I don't know. I, I would say maybe try standard shopping again, but give it more than you know, maybe a week and a half and, and try to try spend at least like one to two hundred dollars a day. Because what's also gonna happen too is you have to ask you have to ask the person, has there been more interest in Rolex? Because before someone just drops 10 G's on a credit card, sometimes they do need to call, and that's where those draft orders come in. Right. Um, so, John, do you recommend we should add contact number, phone number on every product page and keep a track of those calls, maybe integrated with call tracking metrics? Well, I would I would say there's $300,000 a year that come in that we, yeah. you know, it's going to be outside of here. Um, there's definitely a lot less traffic than there used to be, which you can even see the correlation of, of you know, a downward trend. The orders are the same, but the AOV is lower. So I would say yes. Um, Facebook and Instagram seems to be what they're pulling back on pretty hard. I'd ask them why they're doing this here too, just as an FYI. Because that social proof is going to build more brand trust when people visit their site. Right. Yeah, so that's one of the things that we've been trying to work with them on. They have a Facebook agency, and the agency is uh, a little difficult to communicate with. They 
go off on their own tangent and do their own things. But the trust that you're talking about, John, um, I think that's one of the issues with is that they don't have that organic social media and even people who have testimonials, right? Like, I don't know anything about the store, but I took a chance and I decided to buy this. So one of the things that I've been trying to adjust, address with them is to tell them, hey, you actually need to build more of that organic um, trust. Otherwise, no one's going to buy the 5,000, 7,000, 10,000 product that you're uh, kind of telling them to do. Yeah, I would, I would drive home the fact that they're competing against eBay and also Amazon. Um, so what happens is Amazon is going to start to eat more and more and more into their profit margin and into their user base because Amazon now sells Rolexes right off Amazon. Uh, and I can get it tomorrow. And so what I would say is the competitive industry that you're going up against is is Amazon. Now, yes, you're not selling new. You have good quality products, good quality prices. Yes. But to a person that's going to save, you know, three or four grand when they're dumping 20K in a watch, they don't care. They really don't. They're not, they spent three grand to know they can get it, you know, authenticated tomorrow versus scammed online. So pricing when you're over the 5K makes zero difference to these people. These are people that are making $500,000 a year on like one of their side gigs. Like that's who buys Rolexes. The one guy that I know that just bought a Rolex recently makes $2 million net profit untaxable and just credit card uh, cash back because his ad spend so high. So that's, I mean, that's, that's the type of people there's Colby. Yep. That, that dude is just raking in the dough. Um, that's how he affords those amazing earbuds. So the, the thing that we have to look at too, is, is to kind of set a bit of a stage with them. Say, hey, we understand that we're pushing on Google. I do think we have a lot of work to do inside of this, inside of that account. Just as an FYI, we, we really do. Um, What's funny is we're, this is the only reason why they're still in business right now is this one campaign. It really is. I mean, when you're looking at just the spend level here, like that's where, that's where we have to look at this. This is the, again, another slide that always, always is everybody that we, we talk about. We don't know what they're doing in meta. That's the bad part is we can't see what their meta activity is. I would almost kind of run through this with them a bit by saying, hey, we we want to have our prospect and be 70% of the activity or our marketing needs to be at least 20 and then our acquisition is at least you know 10. Right now, majority of our efforts, if we just look at what I can see right now is pretty much right here. Um, and their meta is crashing. Their, that's Instagram and, and the Facebook. And we have no idea if Meta is doing anything over here, we do have this covered though. So we have a lot of work to do to kind of rebuild their brand, but because they are a reseller of fine jewelry, I think we do need to diversify our ad spend, not not pull back on pendants. Don't, don't ever touch this thing, but start to push more standard shopping in categories. Like should, do we have, five more categories that we can start to dip into and track are we actually getting leads and sales and it's going to take a month by the way no one just dumps 20k in in a watch in three days um unless they have a watch that no one else has for a good price those are the collector pieces but i would say that getting more diversified in our ad spend is something that's going to be really important because we need to start to diversify our uh let's do this here Oh man, let me just do this. Let me get rid of tax, uh, gross sales, net sales. I don't care about returns. I don't care about tax. Um, total sales is fine. Let's get rid of vendor. Okay. Our ad spend here, when you look at the last 30 days, is so you can kind of see when you look at net quantity descending. These are all things we're spending money on, but this is also only the things that we're spending money on. <laughs> what if we spent money elsewhere at higher also AOVs? And don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, dip into it. Start to track, hey, I'd like to start to diversify. You can even, you know what I would say is even, even I'll drop this screenshot here in the chat to say, hey, here's, here's a correlation. We're spending on pendants and we're spending on chains. We started chains, we're starting to see more chain sales. 
we started we we have a rolex campaign we're we're seeing a rolex sale what we want to do is say what are we spending on the category what are we making on the category but look at look at it month over month but also i need to know are the people calling are people emailing in are people what are people doing for these type of products on you know on a month to month basis um there's a company called architect that i am kind of helping on the side like an unpaid client is just seeing if it's something that we can we can get off the ground because I wanted to test use them as a test dummy for some tests and I didn't charge them anything. But even just these people are, I mean, these are all the people that are contacting them just every single day. Like it's, it's insanity. So we need to know this too. Like these people are like, okay, have a great day. Like, you know, thank you very much. You've been so helpful. Like he does have cancer. So it need to take a diagnostic diagnostic approach. It's about cancer treatment for dogs. Um, so all those things that we need to know, like we need to be involved in their business well so that we can say, if we start to spend your harder money on these products, does it look like we're starting to generate leads that are gonna be either purchased by by you submitting a draft order or are we just completely falling flat and we're spent $800 on earrings and no one wants earrings. Before we look into price, let's try something else. Got three minutes left. So I know we just kind of took the time for those two, but hopefully that hopefully that gives you all a bit of information. Just two things. If we if we look inside of Google and says it doesn't look like it's working, we haven't looked everywhere. We have to look everywhere. And we also have to talk to our client about that. We have to say, are these people emailing you? That like what kind of conversations are they having inside of the back end of their Shopify that we don't know about that we're starting, that we're gonna stop because Google didn't say we we should keep going. Yeah. Let's go and get five. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Just to give on. you some context, uh, John, basically the, the main concern that the client has is in regards to lead volume. I've been trying to run the account in broad on a TCP 